Right now, we're going to our third speaker, Anas Meziana. He is a former student at the Rotterdam School of Management and the founder of Rocco, an organization that tries to bring together or, uh, the, 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 the bicultural talent in the Netherlands and uh, employers. And he will talk about the challenges that are faced on the road doing this and about the solutions that might lay ahead. The floor is for Enes Mezian. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Thank you, Geert, for the introduction. My name is Enes, um, and I'm the founder of Rocco, a career and talent platform. So for, you, for those of you who are, like me, born and raised in Rotterdam um, and uh, experienced living and raising in Rotterdam, you might know what Rocco means. Rocco is actually... Surinames for werken, for working. And I think it's uh, to, 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 uh, yeah, it's really nice to see that we are uh, trying to make a new narrative. So we are creating new narratives. And I will take you along my journey today. And um, first of all, I will take you with me to where it all started. So I'm getting my. So, you all know this one, right? The I will statement. This was me in 2014, uh, studying at the RSM, uh, Global Business and Stakeholder Management. And my statement was, I will be what I can be. Actually, I wanted to state, I will be what I want to be, but that sounded a bit too cocky. So, uh, studying at RSM, my... Uh, my, my goal was to have a diploma, have a degree, and go out there and, and, and be what I can be. Uh, but being bicultural, uh, for me in this instance, being raised between the Dutch and Moroccan society and the Dutch and the Islamic norms and, and values, it also meant that I was shifting between different worlds. This is what my other world looked like. This is not me, but this could be me. Um, my grandfather came here in the 1960s, 1963 to be specific, as a labor migrant, not an expat as it is uh, called today, but a labor migrant to Netherlands. From Morocco, he came to the Netherlands. And he worked his ass off, excuse me for my language, uh, in uh, the Rotterdam Harbor. 50 years later, I was the first of his 19 grandchildren to go to a university, to study at a university. Also, during my studies and uh, 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 finishing and graduating, I was living in Krooswijk. So those of you who don't know Krooswijk, it's the neighborhood next to Kralingen, next to the Erasmus University. And I was living in the zip code 3034. This might not say much to you, but the zip code 3034 was the poorest zip code or had the lowest average income in the Netherlands back in 2016. So what this meant for me was even though I was getting a university degree and uh, getting out there, um, I was also playing an away game on the labor market with a 03 down on the scoreboard. And this is what it looked like. Oh. This is where I applied for a job. I wanted to be a, a management trainee, so I applied for a lot of uh, big firms, big corporates, but also wanted to be a consultant. It took me 26 applications, almost a year, to get a job at an employer that wasn't even on my dream list or target list for employers, but I had a good time in the end, post and now. Unfortunately, my story is not a story in itself. This is what youth unemployment looks like in the Netherlands. So the graph, uh, the graphic uh, to the left, uh, you can see a difference between youth with and without a migration background. The numbers in unemployment are almost double. On the graph, the graphic right, so this, the, the graphic left is, is, uh, is overall without, uh, without consideration of uh, education level, but the graph right, 
shows the unemployment of HBO students or college students a year and a half after they graduate. And what you can see is that the light blue uh, bars, they represent the, uh, the talents without, with a non-Western migration background. Regarding to the uh, dark blue uh, uh, tables that are representing the talents without a migration background. And you can see that in some specific sectors, the unemployment between these two talents or these two groups that were both born and raised mostly in the Netherlands, that there are, is a, a difference between even, some, uh, even in some cases of three times the unemployment rate. Right? So where does this all come from? And what is the, what is, uh, the background of this? Well, you all, know, you all might know the Bermuda Triangle. It's an imaginary triangle on the western side of the uh, uh, Atlantic Ocean. And I use this metaphor to describe uh, the, the journey that a lot of bicultural talents face when they graduate. Namely, they, um, uh, so the Bermuda Triangle is known for the fact that a lot of ships and, 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 uh, and planes uh, get lost or, 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 or get lost of the radars or sometimes sink and never, uh, and never uh, or disappear. Um, and in, in the case of, of bicultural talent, they check in with the right documents at Schiphol they go on the plane to their dream destination and somewhere, somewhere along the way, sooner or later, they fly over the Bermuda Triangle. And what does this, how does this Bermuda Triangle look like? Well, first of all, they lack network. And with network, I mean wheelbarrows, so kruiwagens in Dutch, people that can introduce you at employers. Hey, I know this guy, he's looking for a job. Maybe you want to get a cup of coffee with him. And snow sweepers, people that can help you during those uh, during those uh, uh, hard times at for you're going for your first job. Second and third ones are skills. So, what you see is a lot of bicultural talent. They miss kind of skill set, specifically a job application skills and self awareness. Being the first in your family that is pursuing this this dream or this or this higher education segment means you're always kind of uh, a strange duck in the frame that ain't in the bite, as we say in, in Dutch. And you don't find people to like discuss with you, who's, yo, this is what I'm thinking about, this is where I want to go, these are my ambitions. But it's also labor market awareness in the sense that you have a lack of role models in which you can identify yourself and a misfit between uh, a living world and the labor market. So that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that there are exclusion mechanisms on the labor market, blind spots and unconscious biases uh, among employers. So what does it mean to be uh, living between two cultures, to switch in social norms and values and value systems? A lot of employers don't have, or uh, recruiters that don't have that baggage can't uh, can't identify it with those people. And what we also see is that a lot of employers have a homogeneous network and not being able to reach and attract bicultural talent. So, nice uh, analysis, and, uh, and as you might think, congratulations. And now what? Well, we think that we should bridge the gap between bicultural talent and the labor market. And we do so by approaching the pains that I just discussed. So we provide a platform for bicultural pioneers to inspire upcoming talent. We want to inspire people with providing them with those role models. We also train bicultural talents to profile themselves on the labor market. Uh, we give uh, application uh, courses, etc. We also have a coaching uh, uh, trajectory in which we offer bicultural talents, those wheelbarrows and snow sweepers that they don't have in their own environment. On the side of the employers, we provide them with a network to access these talents outside their traditional networks. We also find it very much important to create more awareness about cultural uh, identities, about what does it mean to be living between two cultures and finding your way on the Dutch labor market, but also in Dutch society in a broader sense. And last but not least, we mediate between employers and bicultural talents.
So one thing we provide are our matis. Again, a word from Suriname, and it's a bit of Dutch slang we use uh, to create a new narrative. So on our jobs page, um, we provide bicultural talents that are interested in working at certain employers or applying for certain jobs with a network of matis. And these matis are ambassadors, professionals that work with our partner organizations that want to uh, yeah, they want to uh, have uh, an impact and also want to help young talents to be their new uh, colleagues. So uh, that's, this is one, yeah, you can say one way we try to, uh, we try to uh, create more equal opportunities. And of course, we are not working on ourselves. We work with mostly great and big corporates that also feel the, um, the necessity to do something about this issue. They want to create more equal opportunities. They want to have a more diverse labor force. Uh, there are some employers among these that literally say to me, like, look, we are situated in Rotterdam. We have a head office in Amsterdam. And we see two different societies the society within our walls and the society without, uh, outside of our walls. And if you, if, you, if you realize that in Rotterdam, a city that we spoke, uh, that, my pre that the previous uh, 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 people spoke about, Rotterdam is a city of minorities. 52% of the people living in Rotterdam has, have a bicultural background. So it's it's unexplainable, not only to your customers, but also to your stakeholders, to your employers, to the rest of the world, that these people aren't finding their way to your uh, company as an employer. So we work with a, with a series of, uh, of big corporates. Together, we, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we try to fix this and create more equal opportunities. Well, guys, this was my presentation. If you want to learn more about Rocco, please visit our website. It's www.rocco.nl or uh, reach out to me on uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, and you can also follow us on YouTube. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and I would love to answer your questions if there are still questions.